Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be taking a quick range look at this Norinco underfolder that we have here. Kind of a unique gun. Unfortunately we don't see too many of them these days due to the import ban that these were placed under. What we're going to do is uh, step over to the back of the truck, take a quick look at it, and uh, let you know some of the features, some of the distinguishing markings and characteristics of the Norinco AKs. Uh, and then after that we'll let you know what we think of it overall at the end. First thing we'll do I suppose is take it apart and let you guys actually see how that works. Typical AK stuff here. We're just going to push in here on the back of the recoil spring. Pull our top cover off. Of note for AK junkies out there that is a uh, non-bribbed uh, top cover I should say. Set that off to the side. And uh, as you guys can see this, this rifle is not in the best condition in the world but certainly it's Still quite nice, but the metal here has no finish on it. This one here is all matching numbers, standard AK bolt stuff that'll actually focus. You can see there, just simply uh, a little bit rusted. Uh, so that is what it is, but AKs tend to not give a crap too much about that stuff. Let's see if we can pop this off here actually while we're at it. Show you guys a little AK trick. If you guys are new to this, uh, take your carrier and you can use that to actually open up your gas tube. Now this one may never have been taken off. <laughs> There's a very real chance of that. We'll see what we actually find here. We finally got the tube off. It was a little bit difficult at times, but you can see in there if that'll actually uh, focus. Again, gun's never been cleaned. Nothing like that at all, but uh, does have the electroless electro pencil, I should say, markings in there. Again, all matching numbers. Same here on the barrel. This certainly needs to be cleaned. Uh, I know a lot of you AK guys out there seeing this rifle are just abhorred by the, the condition it's in, but the fact that you get to see it at all is pretty cool in my opinion. Uh, we have our gas block here. You can see it has a nice blue finish all the way around. It is chromed in there. I can see it through some of the grit and grime. And of course, the hand guards are typical AK. Uh, Chinese AK stuff. I believe that's a chew wood. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I believe that is what it's called. So uh, certainly nice and very unique wood. It's a little bit soft though. So if you're ever trying to refinish it, you're probably going to have some problems there. Although admittedly at this point, guys, if you're in America and you're refinishing a Chinese AK, you should just smack yourself. So <laughs> don't do that. But that is uh, the rifle completely disassembled. Up front, there's a few things you're going to notice. This gun was purchased in 1994, as I understand it. So you're going to see some band features. Uh, one of those, of course, is that it was very likely pinned, the muzzle device. But this uh, slant brake did come with it, according to the owner. So very likely a Chinese slant brake, because it does have nice blued finishing that matches. Um, 14 millimeter threads, so nothing too fancy there at all. It does depress and actually come off. I'm not going to do that here on camera to save time, but the slit brake works fine uh, for controlling recoil. It's certainly a lot better than nothing. Um, of course, we have a little bit more advanced mobile devices out there on the market today. Um, we have the cleaning rod underneath, which I know a lot of folks really like. I think AKs just don't look great without cleaning rods. We have the uh, milled off bayonet lug, again a feature of the times in 1994 during the uh, Clinton gun ban. And uh, I find this kind of odd that this was sold during that period because uh, the Chinese guns were or stopped for importation before that. So this must have been in somebody's inventory for a long time, just sitting in a warehouse very likely uh, before it was actually sold off and they had to do that in order to get it out the door. But again, the retainer here, very standard uh, AK stuff, nothing too fancy there. One thing I like about these Chinese AKs is the way they do their sling attachments. Uh, most sling attachments are going to be sort of built into the gas block, but not the Chinese ones, at least not a lot of them anyway. So you're going to have this piece, which is actually an independently moving piece. As you guys can see there. So that's kind of cool. Another thing that's definitely cool about the Chinese AKs, and there are a few other variants as well that use this, is this hooded front sight there. So um, again, it does protect the front sight. The AK front sight's pretty durable as it is, but when you add that hood in there, it's about as indestructible as it gets for a sighting system, of course, if you couple it with the rear sight here. Now take a look at the rear sight. You can see it does have the battle zero. It goes all the way out to 800 meters. Again, pretty standard stuff, although it does have the nice blued finish that we've seen throughout the gun. Continuing to move back, we have the Norinco markings up front, made in China. And of course, the factory 66 markings that are very iconic with a lot of different Chinese firearms. Now, take a look in the receiver there. You'll see chrome line barrel, as you'd expect from the Kambach AK. And the trigger on this is one I want to point out that's extremely nice. Um, Chinese factory triggers are some of the nicest, if not the nicest, factory triggers I've ever shot. And uh, this one here is no exception at all. It's very crisp, 
light. Um, when you compare it to like a Tapco or something like that, which is still a pretty good trigger actually in and of itself in terms of feel, uh, this one, the brake is much crisper. Um, Tapco sort of are, are long and smooth and light. Not this one, it's light and crisp. So it's sort of the uh, 1980s equivalent of the ALG. Of course, the ALG is a different animal altogether, but just pointing that out there. So very, very good trigger. The grip here, again, very standard Chinese stuff that we have. It uh, does have the reinforcing plate above it, which is a sort of a unique way to tell the Chinese rifles. Again, there's other variants that use it as well, but a lot of the Chinese ones certainly do. Holding the stock is just like any other AK variant. You're just gonna push our button in here, move this forward, take our sling out of the way, close it up. And despite the age, this one here locks up pretty decently once it actually goes into place. It's kind of gummed up there in the mechanism. So, see if we can get it. There we go. We've got it to finally lock in. It does lock up pretty solidly. So you know, here on the back of the receiver, we do have sort of a slant back, if you will. And uh, of course, the rifle has rust. There's no getting around it, but it shoots perfectly as you'd expect in the AK. Well, I think we hit most of the details of it. Uh, unfortunately, this is not my rifle, so we can't take it home and do all the detailed work that we want to. But um, functions just fine after all these years, no issues at all. We've been running Red Army Standard through it, both hollow points as well as full metal jacket rounds. Uh, several different mags, drum that you guys saw, uh, no issues at all. The only thing is, if it was my rifle, I would loosen that safety up a little bit. It's a little bit tight for me. But other than that, a little bit of CLP and some ammo, and this AK will be good to go for a long time. If you guys have any questions about this AK or anything else that we talk about here on the channel, by all means, post below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and we hope to see you in the next video.